Hello, everybody. I'm Matt Donnelly, and this is your Monday Night Football Primetime Preview, the San Francisco 49ers versus the Arizona Cardinals in Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. Yes, we are going to Mexico, and we are getting our primetime on here. This is a huge game, not only in the NFC West, but in the NFC playoff picture in general. This has serious playoff implications on the line as the 5-4 and four San Francisco 49ers are heading to Mexico City to face the four and six Arizona Cardinals who happen to be on the outside looking in. Now, both these teams are coming off week 10 victories there as the 49ers, they knocked off the Chargers 22 to 16 on Sunday night football. And the Cardinals, they defeated the Los Angeles Rams in a battle of the backup quarterbacks there, 27-17. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo, he could get confused as a backup quarterback from time to time. But the truth of the matter is, Arizona, they are allowing 19 fantasy points per game this season to the quarterback position, which happens to be the sixth most in the league. In the last four weeks, that actual number is closer to 20 fantasy points per game. Now, Grapple, he's not going to wow you with his arm talent there, but he is a consistent distributor of the ball, which is basically a nice way of saying he manages the game well. Now, against the Chargers, he threw for 240 yards while averaging 8.6 yards per attempt while sneaking in that touchdown on the ground. Now, Grapple, he currently sits 11th in fantasy points per drop back this season and has finished as a fantasy QB9 or better in three of his previous five contests. Let's give the Cardinals defense a little love this week. Sure, they were playing John Wolford there, who was standing perhaps behind the worst offensive line in the league, but they got the job done, and that was the best of their run defense, and their pass rush has looked all season. Now, on the other sideline there, we have Kyler Murray there. Maybe he's done playing Call of Duty. Maybe not. Who knows? But it sounds like he is close to returning this week. He is literally going to be a game-time decision. So the expectation right now is that he is fully recovered from that hamstring injury. But you're going to want to monitor that injury report leading right up into this game. And honestly, if you have another option at quarterback, I would probably pivot to that just to be safe. Now, the 49ers defense, they have 32 sacks on the season, and they are led by Nick Bosa and his nine and a half. So we'll see if that hamstring is ready to be recovered. Now, San Francisco, they also sit eighth in the NFL in fantasy points allowed per game. They're allowing an average of 13.9 fantasy points per contest to that quarterback position. San Francisco has been allowing 257 passing yards per game over the last three weeks there, which is surprisingly the sixth most over that period while allowing 18.86 fantasy points per game over the last four. If Murray is a no-go once again, then the Cardinals will turn to Colt McCoy once again, who is 26 of 37 last week for 238 yards with a touchdown to A.J. Green. Yes, we had an A.J. Green sighting last week, courtesy of Colt McCoy. Now, running back for the 49ers. Hey, the 49ers are as good as anybody when it comes to running the ball. They got Christian McCaffrey. They got Elijah Mitchell. And we need to stop freaking out over Elijah Mitchell stepping in and getting carries. San Francisco, they made an investment on their playoff hopes and keeping McCaffrey fresh is all part of that. McCaffrey ran a route on 70% of the 49ers pass plays in week number 10, which is the fourth highest rate amongst running backs behind only Jonathan Taylor, who did it at 77%, Austin Eckler at 72 and Elvin Kamara at 71%. Now, everyone tends to forget that Mitchell was playing pretty darn good prior to landing on the IR, averaging 4.94 yards per carry now Mitchell has proven that he can run and run well in Shanahan's outside zone scheme there which is something that McCaffrey has somewhat struggled with previously now Arizona is allowing the 14th most fantasy points per game to opposing backs this season at 23.4 while allowing the eighth most receiving yards to backs at 382 yards they are also allowing four and a half yards per carry this season and over the last four contests the Cardinals are allowing 27.9 fantasy points per game. Now, the other back we've got to pay attention to is, well, basically, he's the last man standing there in Arizona, and that's James Conner. Yes, they got rid of Eno Benjamin, and that still cuts deeper, and he was probably expendable because Conner, he played 95% of the snaps last week, resulting in two touchdowns and 86 yards. I guess they still got Keontae Ingram. Now, the 49ers are still one of the toughest teams on opposing backs there to cash in on fantasy production. Over the last four weeks, the 49ers are allowing 16.3 fantasy points per game and on the season they are allowing the fewest fantasy points to running backs 
altogether. Now, Debo Samuel, is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? I don't know. He's just a football player. But it really feels that Samuel, he has been getting that fantasy squeeze here. Christian McCaffrey is coming and does what he does. And he does a lot of the same things that Samuel has been able to do. Now, Brandon Ayuk, he's got something special cooking there with Jimmy Grapple, George Kittle, Elijah Mitchell. They're both healthy. And since week three, Samuel has a 23.6% target share, which works out to about 78 targets per contest there and a 27.3 end zone target share not to mention a 2.03 yards per route run now samuel he has been utilized as a short area weapon call him weapon x if you will but he just isn't getting those deep targets and he's got that a dot there that's sitting at about 4.8 now we all know that mccaffrey and mitchell they're going to get their touches on the ground but the 49ers attack hits their opposition from every possible angle. Last week, Samuel, he had four carries for 27 yards against the Chargers. So expect more of the same again this week. Now, speaking of Brandon Ayuk, Ayuk is coming into this week, leading this 49ers team in pretty much every receiving statistical category imaginable, from yards to touchdowns to targets to receptions. Now I know that Samuel, he has missed some time, and I'm not really ready to say that Ayuk has supplanted him as a wide receiver one in San Francisco, but I'm also saying that it's not true and that it is definitely an interesting trend that we need to be following. Now, since week number six, Brandon Ayuk, he ranks 12th in targets per game there at 9.3, eighth in fantasy points per game there at 19.3. And meanwhile, Samuel has been the, that recipient of that aforementioned there fantasy squeeze, ranking outside the top 30 in both those categories. While Arizona has allowed the 13th fewest fantasy points per game to receivers this season, over the last four weeks, it's been an entirely different story as they are allowing 37.3 per game, which happens to be the sixth most. It's certainly going to be fun to see Samuel and Ayuk as they face off against Marco Wilson and Byron Murphy. Now, we talked about the 49ers wide receivers, Ayuk and Samuel. Hey, they're pretty darn good, but the Cardinals, they got a pair of wide receivers, maybe even a triplet of wide receivers this week that are pretty good themselves, starting with DeAndre Hopkins. Now, per Graham Barfield stat pack there over on fantasypoints.com, by the way, you get yourself 10% off by using promo code 22VIPERS10. This year, Nuke has lined up as the X receiver 41% of the time. He's been the flaker or the Z receiver 33% of the time, and he's lined up in the slot at 25% of his routes run. Historically speaking, Hopkins has played a majority of his snaps on the left boundary. Since returning from suspension, Hopkins is fifth in fantasy points per game and has commanded a 32.9% target share and accounted for 45.8% of the Cardinals' air yards. That will certainly catch the attention of the 49ers defense, who are going to look to counter with Traverius Ward, who has allowed just a 58.5% catch rate and an 81.7 passer rating thus far this season. With Colt McCoy slinging it under center last week, Hopkins would end up seeing 14 targets, converting 10 of them into 98 yards, including a nice back shoulder catch along the sideline. Now the third wide receiver, we're going to get to the second one here in just a second, but that guy who's kind of made a little bit of hay there underneath, Rondell Moore. He had benefited, like DeAndre Hopkins last week, with Colt McCoy under center there, seeing double-digit targets and turning them into nine receptions for 94 yards. That's a pretty darn good game from a wide receiver that we don't exactly value the way that maybe we should. Now, the injury to Ertz is probably one of those reasons that we need to value Rondell Moore just a little bit more as the Cardinals look to rely on the receivers a little more. See what I did there? Even if they get Marquise Hollywood Brown, more on him in a second, someone is going to need to step up underneath and that's a role that Rondell Moore is more than capable of filling. Moore has a 22.9% target share and a 22.7 targets per route run rate since week number eight and he hasn't finished any lower than the wide receiver 16 for fantasy purposes and you have to like his matchup this week against Jimmy Ward who was beaten for a touchdown last week against DeAndre Carter and has allowed a 100% catch rate and a 143.8 passer rating so far this season. And now Marquise Hollywood Brown. Now don't get too excited, at least not yet, because this could come right up until game time. But the Cardinals, they open up Brown's practice window on Wednesday afternoon. So there is a chance that he could be on the field on Monday night. We also saw him practice on Thursday. And you know what? He looked pretty darn good. In the six games of 
Brown had played prior to breaking that bone in his foot. He was averaging 18.3 fantasy points per game, which was the eighth most amongst the wide receiver position. Then again, that was prior to Hopkins' return. So sorting out this production could be a weekly challenge for fantasy managers. It might be a bit much to automatically assume that Brown's going to step right in there and get nine plus targets on a routine type basis there, as he had in the five games prior to him landing on the IR. But hey, we can always wish, right? We can, there's always hope out there. Now, if Brown does indeed return this week, he is stepping into a favorable matchup against a 49ers secondary that hasn't been the same since the loss of Emmanuel Mosley. In fact, over the last four weeks, the 49ers are surrendering the third most fantasy points to opposing receivers on a per-game basis, allowing 44 fantasy points per game. Now, another receiver, or tight end, if you will, that is looking for some big-time fantasy production this week. How about George Kittle? Because Arizona is literally the worst when it comes to defending the tight end position this year. There are certain rules that you follow in fantasy, and you and it, one of them happens to be you start the tight end that is going against the Cardinals. This is one of those get-right type games for George Kittle, who's coming off that one-catch, 21-yard performance against the Chargers last week. And it's really tough to figure out why the Cardinals are so bad against the tight end position. they got Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson are two of the best safeties in the game today. Not to mention they got two of the more versatile linebackers in Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins there. But for whatever reason, the Cardinals are allowing 24 fantasy points per contest over the last four weeks, which includes four touchdowns and 354 yards over that period. And finally, the rookie tight end here, he's going to represent Cardinals and the Cardinal Nation here. The Sea of Red will be putting their tight end hopes on the young guy. McBride, he played 91% of the snaps, which worked out to about 64% of a route share, scoring just 1.7 fantasy points on just that single target. That's not exactly the greatest fantasy debut, but the potential is there. We're seeing him on the field, and that's half the battle. When Brown officially comes back, that's basically going to turn McBride or more into basically a fantasy landmine. Now, Ertz, he was going to have a difficult time earning targets behind Hopkins, behind Brown, and, and he is already an established playmaker at the tight end position, something that McBride just simply hasn't done yet. And considering the 49ers ranked seventh in fantasy points against the position this season, you're probably best off dating the position altogether, especially this week the 49ers have allowed 11.3 fantasy points per contest in recent weeks which has them somewhere in the middle of the pack and they've only allowed 179 receiving yards over those four weeks of action and if you're looking for more action you've got to head to fantasypoints.com because we got you covered everywhere from college football to dfs to of course fantasy football and you can get your subscription today and save 10 percent by using promo code 22 vipers 10 with that said this has been your monday night football primetime preview i'm matt donnelly and we'll see you next week